Hello, in this short video tutorial I will introduce you to the main elements of R language syntax. I will also show you how those main elements of R syntax are supported or reflected in R Studio interface. So we have a total of 10 learning outcomes for this video lecture. Uh, they are marked as LO1 through LO10. So I'll show you how to add comments to R code, how to use R Studio for entering and running R code. I will show you some examples of utility functions in R, such as get working directory and set working directory. I'll show you how to retrieve help information for R functions, how to perform simple arithmetic operations. We'll spend quite a bit of time talking about uh, various uh, data types in R, the most common data types in R and data structures. Uh, we will talk about data frames, which is by far the most common data structure in our language. We will also talk about writing conditional statements in R. Uh, writing loops, and finally installing packages. Specifically, I will talk about installing the swirl package because that's the package that you, that you will use to practice uh, elements of our syntax in the next uh, two modules. So this is uh, an overview of the entire video lecture. I also would like to note that all uh, lines of R code uh, together with nodes are included in the R syntax introduction.r file. Uh, this file is posted right below the link to this video in Canvas, so you can and, and, and should uh, follow this demonstration by running uh, code from that R syntax file on your own in R Studio. So, so let's start with the first element of R syntax presented in this tutorial, which is comments. As you can see, comments in R, uh, they are in green and they have uh, a hashtag preceding them. So this is how you create a comment, by creating, uh, by putting a hashtag right before the line of code that you would like to comment out. So if you delete that hashtag, that becomes a part of our code. If you add hashtag, that becomes a comment, okay? Uh, unfortunately, in R, unlike in some other programming languages, there are no, uh, uh, you know, there are no uh, characters for commenting out like a whole block of, of code, okay? But there is a workaround, what you can do you can select uh, the code that you would like to comment out and then go to code and then uh, select comment on comment lines, right? And this is, will go ahead and comment out this code so it will not be executed when you run this file. So you can go back and you can uncomment. And alternatively, you can use desktop shortcut, which is Control Shift plus C. I know some people like to memorize those. For, for me, I don't use the, those that much because for some reason I cannot remember shortcuts that well. I always use visual interface for that. So, 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 so once again, to create a comment in R, just use hashtag or use this comment uh, in comment out feature from the interface or a shortcut. So how do we use R Studio for entering and running R code? You just create an R file, just like what I did here, and then you enter your R code together with comments. So for example, here I already entered uh, the following code. X will be assigned this value, Y will be assigned this value, and Z equals X times Y, and let's say I will add times 10. And then uh, this will uh, this line of code that contains only letter Z. What it will do? It will just um, you know it will just display what's stored in Z. So let's go ahead and run this code. For that, we will select the portion of the R code file that we would like to run, and we click this run function. Alternatively, you can do it uh, from the code menu, right? So you can like run selected lines, uh, uh, rerun previous, and things like that. But I'm preferring to use uh, the uh, mouse option. So I highlight those lines with my mouse, I click Run. Again, you see that X, Y, and Z are values that are added to our environment, which means they are in the operating uh, memory, uh, random access memory, so you can go ahead and use those objects in further calculations. So this is how we enter code. We just run, uh, we just write code in that R file, and then we save it. Uh, we go to File, Save, uh, to, to reuse and to work on that uh, code later. So how do so? Let me show you some examples of utility functions. And by the way, they're so numerous we cannot go uh, through many of them due to time limitations for this video lecture. But just to show you like a couple of examples of utility functions, I would say one, uh, the two most uh, uh, valuable utility functions in R is for setting and getting current working directory. So get wd is for getting working directory, and set wd is for setting working directory. Uh, in R, you will work with data files such as Excel sheets or comma-separated values, and you need to know which uh, directory you're currently in 
in order to open those files or save files uh, uh, based on your analysis, save uh, data to files uh, uh, that is an output of your analysis to an appropriate file and folder. So we use get working directory function to, to save our, our current location in the operating system, in the file system, into the current working directory variable. And, and when we have this line of code, it just tells us display what's inside this working directory. So you run it like this, and this is the output, okay? So we are in C users, uh, we create our documents. And then, uh, you know, then we, let's say our desired working directory is disk C, the so-called root directory. So we go ahead and we create a variable that stores that path. Now, don't get confused here. Uh, here we have a forward slash, right? Because in Windows operating system, it's a backward slash. So what people do, they copy, uh, you know, they copy the, the path, the file path from the Windows operating system, and then they paste it into R, and it doesn't work, gives them an error because it's a backslash. So in R, it's always a forward slash. Just remember that. So it will be C. And then we set working directory to disk C. Again, if we, if we use get working directory, Right, it should tell us that we are currently located in C. So that's the output. So that function uh, uh, to set a desired working directory to C worked uh, worked out properly. If you if you ever want to look up uh, help information related related to a particular function, then use the question mark and then function name without parentheses. So so this command will open help for the set uh, working directory function, and it's displayed right here in the help pane. Uh, of the of the window right here, so you can read more about this function and what exactly it does. Uh, at the most basic level, uh, R and R Studio can be used to perform simple arithmetic calculations. Uh, those simple arithmetic calculations they follow the so-called PEMDAS rule, where the order of execution of arithmetic operations as follows: first, uh, whatever is in parentheses that is executed, then exponents are executed, then multiplication, division. And after that, you have addition and subtraction. So for example, you know, you can pause this video and try to evaluate this expression, what will be executed first and what will be done last, or you can do it in R and you'll get the following answer, 20.6. So I guess it will be hard to do it uh, uh, in, in your own um, uh, memory because of the, of the decimal point. Okay, next we're going to talk about declaring and uh, checking for variable types. So just like any other programming language, R supports a variety of data types. And those data types have names that are somewhat parallel to what you will see in most programming languages. One of the most common data types is the so-called numeric data type. So let's say if we store a value of 2 in X, and then we use the class function to look up the data type of this variable, we'll get the following output numeric so this is a numeric variable some variables are character variables they store characters i think in some programming languages uh, this data type is called string so s store, stores a string and if you check for class of s it's a character some variables are logical in some programming languages they're called boolean so t stores the value of true f uh, stores the value of false and then if you check for class of t you get logical. So that's that's the name of the Boolean uh, true-false data type in R. Dates, the data, uh, the date data type uh, plays a very important role in data analysis because a lot of data analysis techniques such as time series analysis, they're tied to dates. So here we're going to store um, uh, this value as date. So we're going to tell, uh, we're going to tell R that this is not just a string. This is not just a sequence of number. This is not an alphanumeric string. This is a date. And then if you check for class of D, you will see that this is a date. Another important uh, feature of R that makes it very uh, suitable for data analysis is that R is a vectorized language. So what you can do, you can create a vector of values and then you can uh, um, perform operations to this entire vector without writing any loops. And we're gonna talk more about it in a second. So here we have a numerical vector that stores one, two, three, six values. And then if you just type num, num vector, you will see the output being displayed right here. We have six values. And then if you check for class of this vector, it's a numeric vector. Uh, some vectors can be uh, character vectors. In other words, they will store strings instead of numbers. For example, a, char, a char vector or, or car vector uh, stores uh, the following three words, Paris, New York, and Tokyo. And we use C 
function to concatenate either numbers or, or strings uh, into one vector. So C means concatenate, you know, put them all together. So when you do this, you'll get the following output. So those are the three elements of this character vector. Again, R is a vectorized language. Operations are applied to all values within a vector. Again, that saves a lot of time because you don't have to write loops that go through the entire vector. You can just apply an operation such as multiplication by 10 to all elements of the vector. So remember, these are the numbers that we have. We can multiply them by 10 by creating a new vector and then storing in that new num vector 10 uh, the result of the operation where all the original elements in the num vector are multiplied by 2. So when you run these lines of code, you'll get the same numbers but multiplied by 10. Uh, another uh, another important uh, element, I would say it's like a date structure, data structure in R, is, is a, um, a list. So a list is a vector containing other objects, uh, such as vectors as items. So for example, here we create a big list that contains uh, variables x, s, t, f, d, and then two vectors. So basically a, a list is like a container that, that can store all kinds of elements. And this is the kind of output that you see. You have one element at a time, and then within those elements, you see specific values, okay? So what's the difference between a vector and a list? Well, I think it's clear from this example. Uh, vectors, they store elements of the same data type, either all numbers or all strings, right? Or all characters. Uh, a list can store a combination of uh, various data types. In fact, it can store uh, other lists as well. So here we have all kinds of things being thrown into that my list list. We have individual variables, we have vectors, and they're all uh, uh, wrapped in that uh, uh, my list container. Now, by far the most uh, important data structure or data element in R is the so called data frame. So what is a data frame? You can think of a data frame as a table or, or an Excel sheet. Again, I'm not saying uh, Excel workbook because an Excel workbook can contain many sheets. So we're talking about like one sheet containing a two-dimensional data set, meaning like a table, okay? So data frames, just like Excel sheets, they have rows, they have columns, and columns can be assigned names. So in this code, in this code below, we'll create a simple three by three data frame, which means it has three rows and three columns. So what we will do, we'll create columns first. So we'll have X, Y, and Z column, and the columns of a data frames are vectors, right? Because they store, uh, uh, they store data of the same data type. Just like in an Excel, in a typical uh, Excel sheet, each column will be devoted to one variable specific data type. Let's say weight or height or uh, sales volume, and it will be the same unit of measurement, right? So we create, uh, uh, column X that stores names of cities, Paris, New York, and Tokyo. In column Y, we store uh, current temperature, let's say in Celsius, plus 10, minus two, and plus eight. And then in column Z or vector Z, we're storing uh, sky conditions, sunny, partially cloudy, and cloudy. And then we're gonna assemble all of these uh, vectors into a data frame using the data frame function. And we, when we do that, we assign column label. So we're saying X will be labeled as city, Y will be labeled as temperature, and Z will be uh, labeled as condition. So we do that. So we can concatenate three vectors or three columns into one data frame. And when we just type weather, this is the content of the data frame. As you can see, it's a simple table or, or simple, a simple uh, Excel sheet. There are many functions for working with data frames. I told you before that this is by far the most common, the most widely used data structure. For example, n row and n call can be used to check the number of rows and columns in a data frame. In our case, it's three. So we have three rows and three columns. You can also access individual columns using the dollar sign. So whether dollar sign temperature means I only want to access the temperature column. So here we only have values for temperature. So here we have only values for sky condition. Okay, uh, if you want to access specific rows or specific columns or specific cells, you can also use that uh, square brackets notation. Remember, under square bracket uh, notation, rows always come first. So what you're telling uh, R here, you're saying, I want to see the first row of the weather data frame. Again, rows come first. Now, here we, we can put columns or we can leave it blank. If you leave it blank, it means all columns. So show us row one and values should come from all columns. So this is what this command means. So here we have the first row that displays the values 
uh, in all three columns for that first row. Now here we're going to specifically access first column, which is this number, and first row. Okay, so we're just going to get value within the first cell of the data frame, and that is Paris. So this is uh, the basics of working with data frames in R. So next we talk about uh, writing conditional statements in R, and those conditional statements uh, are identical and, and very similar in syntax to, to many other programming languages. So let's say here we're assigning I the value of one, and then we're, we're executing, uh, we're evaluating the following condition. If I is greater than zero, then print I is positive. Since I indeed is greater than zero, it's one, we should have this condition is true, right? And therefore, everything within these curly brackets is executed. So the message is I is positive. Now, we can also have if else statements. So, for example, let's say I equals minus 7. So we have the first condition. If I is greater than 0, print I is positive. So if this condition is true, then the code within curly brackets will get executed. If it's not true, then print I is negative, right? So it, 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 if this condition is not true, it will go to the else uh, part of, of the uh, if-else statement. So here we have uh, a more complicated or nested if statement. So one, so let, first of all, let's run this code. So, so what's your prediction? Uh, the prediction, my prediction is that the message will be I is negative because this condition is not true. So I is negative. Uh, some uh, uh, state, uh, you know, this is a more complex version of nested if statement, of if statement, it's called nested if statement, where you have one condition within another condition and within another con condition. So let's say I is assigned uh, the value of zero, and then we're, we're checking for the following condition. If I is less than zero, print I is a negative number. In our case, this is not true, so we go to else if. If i is greater than zero, then print i is a positive number. Now, in our case, this is not true. So that's why we go to else. Else will say print i zero. So if it's not negative, if it's not positive, then the message will be i zero. So what's your prediction for this code? What will be the output? So when we run it, we get i is zero because the, the, uh, the nested if statement evaluated all the way to this part. Uh, just like uh, other programming languages, uh, you can write loops in R, although again, uh, the need to write loops uh, uh, is not as pronounced because R is a vectorized language and you can apply operations to entire vectors. So, so, so here we're saying for index variable, and then in, to make things a bit confusing, the index variable here is called also index, so we're saying for index in 1 to 5, print index. So what this loop will do, it will display values 1 through 5. Then we also have a while loop. As you probably know from your other programming languages, the difference between uh, for, for next, or for loop and while loop is that with while, uh, you don't know the ending condition. In other words, you run the loop until the ending condition happens. So it's not like a predefined number. For for, you know that you want to run one through five. So here you're saying that, uh, you know, you're assigning the value of index of one, and then you're saying while index is less than five, uh, less or equal than five, then print index. And then uh, after that, after you print index, increment it by one, okay? So what it will do, it will do an, uh, the same kind of output as the previous loop. It will display values one through five. Now, while can, can also be like an indefinite loop, it can run indefinitely. For example, you will, uh, you will basically, uh, you know, require something from a user. So you will say like, while uh, user uh, input is not equal escape or something like that, or it's not equal to yes, you know, do this. So that will run infinitely until user enters yes, right? So that's the difference between for loop and while loop. Because with while loop, you can have an uh, undetermined uh, uh, upper bound for, for the entire loop. And again, I would like to note that R can loop through vectors. So for example, so you have a vector that stores, a numerical vector that stores the following number, and then you're saying for index in new vector, print index. So basically you're saying that index will run through all the values in, in the array, in the vector. So you do it like this, so you get one through five. So if you change this to seven, you also get, sorry, I need to do this. So you run uh, 
all those numbers uh, in this array again. So you can loop uh, through vectors uh, uh, using uh, for loop as well. And then you can also loop through character vectors as well. So for index and char, uh, in char vector, so this is our char vector, um, you will display all the values by printing index. So you see all the names get displayed. Uh, for example, what what the loop? Uh, what sh so uh, pause this video for a second and answer the following question: What will the loop below display? So when you run this code, you should get nothing, right? The reason you get nothing is that this condition is never true. So uh, index is assigned uh, a value of one. And it says while index is less than one print index, well, that's not true. So this uh, print function will never, will never be displayed. So this is a very brief overview of R syntax. Uh, now, now that you have a basic understanding of how to use uh, R Studio and how to enter code in, in, uh, in uh, uh, R language, and also what, since now you know one of the main elements of R syntax, you'll be in a good position to start uh, practicing this and many other important elements of R syntax. Uh, in order for you to do that, uh, you will have to install a package called Swirl. And a lot of the lessons that you'll have complete, uh, you'll have to complete uh, in the next couple of modules, they come from that Swirl package, right? And also this, uh, you know, this section of, of our R syntax video lecture shows you how to install packages. Again, all packages that are installed on your machine are listed here, so you can search for them. So if you search for Swirl, you see that I already installed that package on my machine. In your case, uh, this package may not be there. If you look for Swirl or something else and it's not there, it means it needs to be installed. Uh, most of the time, packages are installed from the CRAN uh, collection. Again, there's a website that lists all of the packages available to the uh, R archive network. So if you want to install it from that CRAN collection, you just use install packages. So that's the plural. Like install packages come in plus the name of the package in uh, uh, in quotes, in double quotes. So what, what I will do, I'll go ahead and run it. Just I'll do the installation again. So now you see this progress that, that the package is being installed. So now it's it's downloaded. To load this package, because once you install it, it's available for you to use, but it's not loaded into memory. You need to go to packages, find that package, and then click here. So in that case, Swirl is loaded and ready to use. Alternatively, you can use the library command. So library will go ahead and, and check uh, this package for you so it's loaded. So you see the check mark is here. So, so once you install and launch this package, use the swirl function to start the, uh, the func to, to, to actually uh, uh, launch this package. So first it will ask you how sh should I call you. It doesn't really matter how you call yourself as long as you complete all the lessons. And if you complete lessons and you pay attention, you should be able to score well on quizzes related to, to those uh, lessons as well. So let's say I put my name Vlad. And then it, it asks you, like, well, this is a cue that enter. you need to press Enter to continue. So you read this uh, message and you press Enter to continue. So you can select one, two, or three and press Enter. So let's get started. So you need to complete uh, lessons in that uh, R programming area. So you select number option number one. And then, uh, okay, so within that you go to R programming again. And those are the lessons you will have to complete most of those lessons. So for example, first you will start with the building, uh, basic building block. So you will select option one. So, and then, you know, here's your progress in this lesson, 0%, you haven't completed anything. So this is your cue to hit enter again. Okay, so obviously, okay, type five plus seven and press enter. If you five, type uh, five plus nine, which is incorrect, it will give you the message, not quite, but you're learning, try again. So that it expects you to enter five plus seven. If you do it several, I mean, I'll give, I guess you'll learn it quickly yourself. If you do it several times, it will actually give you the answer. But again, try to figure out on your own without relying on, on those hints that will eventually reveal to you the same answer. But I think it's not everywhere. Sometimes it will not give you the correct answer no matter how many times you, you, you type uh, an incorrect answer. So once again, the correct one, the correct thing that you need to type is five plus seven. Once you do that, it says you're amazing and you already have 8% of the lesson completed. So you'll have to complete a number of lessons from Swirl. Again, just load the Swirl, uh, install the Swirl package, load it using library command or by clicking here and then use 
the swirl function to get started and go to the uh, specific lesson that you need to complete as a part of this course. So that completes uh, a short video introduction to R syntax and uh, also uh, an overview of how that R syntax is supported within our studio environment.